right. We're out here on Teleco Lake and we're gonna try to drop on a few smallmouth. I was just gonna go over the baits that I use. So Teleco's real clear and I come from real clear lakes. And um, most of the time people think clear lakes, you're gonna fish natural colors. But what we found out in East Tennessee is your natural colors on clear usually they'll eat something crazy just like a plain white it's usually the best but I always have a clear like a baby bass or a or a green pumpkin tied on just to do that but your whites crazy as it seems mostly do good throughout the year I don't know what it is about it I think it's just the thread fin we have in the lake so we're gonna tie on these the Mickey rig this is actually the Mickey brand pearl white silver and a baby bass that's the two that i use the most 90 percent of the time so if they come up to you and they're just looking at the white or they're looking at the baby bass i'll drop immediately drop back down reel in and drop back down with a different color and you can usually trigger a bite so we're going to see how it works all right we're going to tie our Mickey rig on on one rod i already got it tied up my white that i always start with and i'm going to show you how to tie the loop knot when you're Mickey rig fishing so you take with your bait, start with your bait, take your line, your leader, and you're gonna make an overhand knot, just like that. Just a regular overhand knot, you got me? All right, take your tag in, stick it through your eye of your bait. Take the line that you, after you stick it through the eye and put it right back through that loop that you made in your line. All right, once you get her close to the eye of the hook, Hold it all in these two fingers and then just thread your line three or four times up the main line. It's kind of cold this morning. Always go three or four and then take your line and stick it right back through the loop that you made. Can you see that? I hope you can see it. Stick it right back through the loop. fingers to work all right and then cinch it down and you got a perfect loop knot cut your tag perfect loop knot and the reason for that is is when it sits in the water and you're fishing vertical it's gonna sit just like that instead of like this if you have a regular knot and you set the hook it's gonna it's gonna come up your eye and you're gonna have it sitting like this fishing vertical and they don't there's no minnow that looks like that they always sit like this when they're dying just more natural presentation and I think it helps a little bit anything that'll help all right so coming to a lake blind we come to Teleco Lake this winter and we're gonna try to Mickey fish so back home we Mickey fish I'm from East Tennessee and we've been doing it for a long time on South Holston Cherokee Lake main difference between those two South Holston which is my home lake we have a lot of soft bottom we don't have big rocks like Cherokee Lake and Teleco like they'll get on soft bottom and they'll go really deep and put their belly in the mud but on these lakes it's not as clear and they have these big rocks they can hide in so coming to a new lake, I'll always check the mud like we do back home, and it's just a habit. But what I found out on these Tennessee River lakes, they like to get in these big rock and lay in between the cracks and everything else. They don't they don't just suspend on mud like they do back home. So it's always, always check the mud just because that's how I always grew up doing it. But then I know, I know then that I need to go idle and find some harder bottom, some rock, just like right here on the bank. And they come run way out through here small mouth on this river system like to get in them so we're out here idling around that's what happens if you want to come to a lake blind always check what you do at home but then you need to figure out what works on this lake best what works on your lakes best so we're going to idle around and try to find some hard bottom okay so we just went over what bait i use what knot i use and what i look for when i'm fishing the structure what structure i look for when Demiki fishing so now that we're on Teleco Lake and this is a hard rocky bottom and I have went through scanning with my live scope all the rocks and I've seen some fish that lifted up on the bottom in between these rocks because 
when these fish are on the bottom, it's really hard to see them on live scope. But with this color palette that I'm using, it's called Orange Crawfish, you can see really bright, like the fish will be really bright on the bottom. So you can kind of tell which rocks they're in between. It's really the only color that I've found you can see fish on the bottom with the best. It's still really hard on live scope to see fish on the bottom, but this is the best color palette for it. Orange crawfish. And I'm actually fishing with my dad here, and we take turns the camera, holding the camera, and it never comes off the live scope because we really want you all to see what's going on. Here comes a fish. You see me dropping down. And there's a fish right below. He comes shooting up immediately, and he gets him. He's reeling them in. I never take it off just to be just so I can keep scanning. Just to see if there's any more around. Don't see any, but I pick my rod up eventually here. And I'm just I'm always scanning with my foot. I'm just scanning, scanning, scanning. Seeing if I can get a hint of a small mouth or a bass or anything coming up off the bottom just to get a hint of where they're at. I'm always, I'm 30 foot, 35 foot out, I think, right now. Yeah. I'm scanning 35 foot out. But this color powder allows me to, to see fish that lift up their self up off the bottom. Just give their self away is what I call it. Because it's really hard to, to tell if they're on the bottom. So I just pitch my bait out. It's going down at 10 feet out right now. I tell you, actually, you can see one come off the bottom already. Stop it right there. And there's two. And there's a third one on the bottom now. But I think, yep, this one got it right there. And you can see two or three more that's lifting up, following them. So that means they got fired up. That's what we call it. They're getting fired up. So right at this point, what's going through our head is <laughs> it doesn't matter what bait you have. You can drop it down there and start catching them. The whole time you're catching these fish this deep, most of the time they're throwing bait up because they're just down there gorging, getting ready for winter time gorging themselves in these bait and what I, what actually I think happens is when they throw up these shad that they're eating their, their buddies are eating the shad that come out of their mouth so that's the whole time you're just dropping 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 you can tell that we got two or three rods out and we're just dropping immediately on them just to get down there while they're fired up and keep them fired up you can see you drop the bait down it's down there Right now it's at five foot out. And here comes a fish right below it. He sees it. He's shooting up. He's shooting up. Alright. I set the hook and I miss him. I think no no no. This isn't it. Got him again. Yep, I think this is another good one. Oh yeah. Okay. And then I think here I pick my rod up. Also, another rod. We're going to pitch it out. Right in front of the boat again. There it goes down 10 feet out again. These fish aren't really moving, which is a good thing. There's not much current today really help things. So you drop down. I drop down here and you can see my bait. Kind of, I'm always continuing to scan even when my bait's not down there. But there's one. He's right under my bait. There's two. I missed that one so it's dropping back down. And look at all of them how they just came up. And he got it. Now look at all of them following him up. It's incredible. Look at all of them. And we're both really getting excited now because we know it's pretty much game on. So I take the phone back and I show the fish. These are all good ones. But comment questions you have. I'm going to continue to post stuff like this. I just haven't had the time to edit. I have all kinds of videos. Also crappy. I have a bunch of crappy videos of how to catch crappy doing this. I'm going to put a link up here at the end of the video. Like and subscribe on my videos. It's Jack Daniel Fishing. You can also find me on Facebook and Instagram. It's Jack Daniel Fishing too. And I really appreciate all the help I can get.
and I'm going to continue to try to help everybody out who has live scope or any any live unit. I've used Mega Live, I've used Lawrence, Active Target. And I really like them both. I just continue to use Garmin. That's what I have, and that's what I've always used. But I have used every one of them. So any questions y'all have, just let me know. DM me on it, Facebook, whatever. Leave it in the comments on YouTube. That'll be good. Thanks, guys.